Welcome to Focus on Abilities, a program about issues affecting the lives of people with disabilities. My name is Lex Frieden. I'm professor of health information sciences at the University of Texas Health Science Center at Houston, and I'll be your host for today's program. We have a very interesting program today, one that I'm sure you're going to be interested in. Before I introduce our guest, I want to ask you a question, and that's one that we will answer before the end of today's program. That is, how many disabled veterans from the Iraq and Afghanistan conflicts are living in the Houston area? Approximately how many veterans who have disabilities that served in Afghanistan and Iraq are living in Houston? Uh, we'll come to that uh, answer in the portion that follows this discussion. So now let me take the uh, opportunity to introduce our guest, uh, Buddy Grantham. Buddy, uh, welcome to Focus on Abilities. Thank you, Lex. I'm very pleased to be here. Now, uh, Buddy, you are the executive director of the Veterans Office, the Mayor's Office on Veterans Affairs in the City of Houston, correct? That's right. City of Houston Office of Veterans Affairs. What, what all does that entail? Well, to boil it down into one, one sentence is making Houston the best place for veterans to live. Uh, the program was started in October of 2007 and its roots were formed actually earlier that summer when there was a series of summits that were put together to review uh, the re issues with the returning veterans. If you remember that year there were some, several articles in major newspapers that broke about the travesty that was going on at Walter Reed Medical Center and how the veterans were receiving substandard medical care and then that there was a very weak, if any at all, transition plan in order to bring veterans back into the civilian community, particularly those with injuries uh, or disabilities, both physical and mental, with the post-traumatic stress disorder or the new signature, you know, which is the traumatic brain injury. And how do we work to brew that forward? Well, in Houston, uh, with this summit, we had over 400 different organizations. Uh, uh, Mayor Bill White and County Judge Ed Emmett had pulled together to identify the issues. Uh, again, an offshoot of that was his creation of this office to take the, the, the guidelines, the, 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 the takeaways from that summit and the committees that worked on it on how to make Houston a better place. And so I'm, I'm orchestrating all those issues. So you actually started putting together the uh, office after the summit then? That's correct. Uh, in between, uh, the first summit was uh, early in the summer, and then part of one of the major recommendations was that there needs to be someone to help orchestrate it. Mayor White took that upon the city and created this office, and I was uh, lucky enough to be the person he selected to run it. Now, Buddy, before you did that, uh, you had other experience with the city, right? Yeah, I came down, I had retired from the Army, Army in August of 2005. Uh, and as we all are familiar, Katrina hit at the end of August. Uh, so I came to Houston from College Station uh, to volunteer at the Astrodome after I'd read about the, the needs there and the needs for the elderly and the disabled to be pulled out of that and put in the specialized housing to get them away from all the issues going on at the Astrodome. Um, came down and found the housing authority that was running that program um, and started putting together housing and helping to orchestrate to getting people out of the Astrodome. Then the city came over and asked me to do the same thing for the George R. Brown. One thing led to another and I ended up being the operations officer for housing 37,000 Katrina families in the greater Houston area. Now that, that, I mean, that was, uh, that job sort of fell to you naturally given the experience you'd had before in the service, right? Well, you know, logistics is logistics, whether it's people or equipment, except for with people, you have to take that human nature in. And obviously you, you may only treat a box of equipment so much, but people have to be handled with respect and dignity um, and care for what their feelings are. Uh, and then... I was asked to work on a community settlement task force in order for to help the Katrina evacuees that are staying here in Houston. How do we get them successfully education, jobs, counseling to move forward with their lives? Or if they had plans, work with New Orleans and other sectors of the country, help them get there. Additionally, I was asked to go <clears throat> over to the Coalition for the Homeless of Houston Harris County as their chief operating officer. And, Simultaneously with uh, the settlement task force, 
worked on putting in systems management functions in the place to take a lot of our lessons learned from Katrina, <clears throat> our 10-year chronic plan to end homelessness, and put those systems into place in order to help achieve that. Okay. Well, that was good background before then you went to the, uh, to the mayor's office uh, to put together this uh, <coughs> office on veterans. And uh, since then, uh, I guess you've been busy 24-7 uh, uh, with all the challenges of doing that. You know, it does take a lot of time, it's especially because when you deal with the veterans, you're also dealing with homeless issues. A third of the homeless here in Houston are veterans. Uh, when you deal with the disability issues, there's about a 20 to 25 percent of the veteran population here in Houston that has disabilities. Um, and, and so it's a very holistic approach to the different things that are going on. Plus, veterans don't fit into one category as any people do. You know, the population is as diverse as the young returning veterans, uh, Viet, uh, Persian Gulf War, uh, Vietnam veterans, Korean World War II. You know, so we get a wide gamut of veterans' ages, veterans' issues, and uh, strategically, how then do we work with our local community to get them involved and work to help get solutions and move them forward. Buddy, how do you find the needs uh, and interests of veterans different than those of uh, people in the general population? I would say the, the greatest difference between the general population and the veteran is some of the many traumatic experiences that veterans have gone through in the face of combat. Uh, there's some altering physical as well as uh, mental cognitive things that change uh, in, a, in a combat situation, especially prolonged combat situations. There's a, an alertness to constantly monitoring the, the uh, environment around you, for example, uh, that comes with that staying alive skill, a sentinel skill. Also, there, um, oh, I, I would say, you know, the police, the fire department, they go through dramatic um, uh, occasions also. Um, policemen, generally the robbers are trying to get away, not set up an ambush to kill you. Mm -hmm. um, and so there's some, some obviously difference between the, well, the typical civilian population would go on their day-to-day -day activities versus what the military. Also, at a very young age, we put great amount of responsibility and leadership on these young men and women, and they really excel and it's just it's amazing to watch them grow. We want to talk more about uh, veterans in Houston and the services that your office provides, but we're going to take a break right now. I hope all of you will stay tuned. We'll be right back with more Focus on Abilities. Welcome back to Focus on Abilities. I'm Lex Fried, and we're here today with Buddy Grantham, who runs the mayor's office on veterans issues in the city of Houston. And uh, Buddy, we've talked about the fact that there are a large number of veterans in the Houston area. I, I think uh, some data indicates as many as 300,000. Uh, what's the up-to-date numbers? In the uh, greater Houston area, it's well over 300,000. 300, and just in Harris County, uh, the last head count from a couple years ago, was 197,000. Wow. Um, and so Houston being the metropolitan, it, it affects generally most of those. The, and also because we're fortunate to have a, a veterans uh, affairs, both hospital, regional hospital, as well as a regional office located here in Houston. So it's a, it's a node for all the information that goes out. But it also allows me in my office capacity to get direct contact with the leadership of those organizations. Mm -hmm be able to work veterans issues. So we're more than a local hub, we're a regional hub. Absolutely. In fact, our regional office here for benefits and uh, um, educational as well as compensation for disabilities stretches all the way from the Texas region south through the Central South America and the Caribbean. Wow. Uh, buddy, the, uh, uh, the Veterans Administration Hospital here, the VA hospital, uh, new facility, uh, large uh, uh, patient population there. How does it rank compared to other VA hospitals around the country? The Michael E. DeBakey Medical Center here is 
by far the one of the finest hospitals in the VA uh, inventory, and it ranks uh, well with on national standardized tests for doctors, for facilities, for uh, programs that they're running. Um, so it's got a lot to brag about uh, this particular hospital, and we're very fortunate to have it here in Houston and the leadership that is there. Uh, when I first got here, there's a gentleman named uh, Edgar Tucker, uh, just an outstanding job. In fact, he's gone over now once he retired and is uh, one of the senior vice presidents with the medical center. Okay. That's the kind of quality individuals mm -hmm. the VA has. Well, the, I'm, I'm aware of the, uh, they, a couple of programs they have there that really are uh, outstanding. One, the Blinded Veterans Program, I think they do some outstanding rehabilitation mm -hmm. there. And, and I think uh, Houston has one of the premier polytrauma uh, treatment centers in, it in does. the system. Um, the, throughout the, the United States, they'll send individuals here for the spinal cord injury also. Uh, just some outstanding programs. And the new director, Adam Walmus, has just picked it up. And he used to be one of the deputies under Ed Tucker and just taking it, keeping it right on stride. Well, that's, that's great for all of us to know. Yeah, in um, addition, permanent legs, but we just also got a sizable multi-million dollar grant here to the VA to work with Baylor College of Medicine on traumatic brain injuries. And that grant came here to this hospital because of this quality. Well, as you noted, that is the signature uh, injury of the uh, Iraq-Afghanistan conflict and largely a result of the IEDs, the explosives that go off near people. and. And may not, uh, well, shrapnel, I think, causes some injuries, but uh, the biggest in injuries related to brain trauma relate to uh, people's heads getting knocked around. Absolutely. And we've created uh, a better vehicles to be able to withstand the IEDs, but still there's, and roll over instead of take the, the brunt of the force through the metal. Um, and although that we've created a lot better technology, there's no technology being created to soften the impact as the brain bounces around inside that skull. Well, I'm aware of the research that we're doing at the University of Texas in collaboration with uh, Baylor and others, and TIRR, the, the oh, TIR is, the, TIR is providing uh, a number of outpatient services to yeah, those Yeah, they persons. have a, a grant that we received called Pro and they do a Project Victory. In fact, while the, while the VA was really still standing up what it needed to do for TBI, Tier was already here. And so there was a lot of services that, uh, especially here in Houston, where while the military and the VA system were ramping up and getting ready, you know, to take on their, their responsibility, it was wonderful to have organizations like Tier already on board. Well, uh, buddy, uh, veterans in the community who need help are invited to call your line, right? Yeah, and we made it even simpler. Just call 311. The, the city has an information system uh, call center, 311, and everything's routed straight into my office. What kinds of issues do you find people are dealing with that you can help? Well, it's particularly in the, in, for people, veterans with the disabilities, uh, there are some housing issues, there's compensation issues, um, being able to navigate the system, get an answer. The, the VA is still a very large bureaucracy. Uh, the numbers out of our regional office um, have shown they're not where they need to be as far as expediting paperwork and processing. You know, and individually, when I talked with the folks down at the regional office, every one of them is a great individual. But somehow when that whole bureaucracy starts putting it all together, there's some major issues. Uh, President Obama is a nominated or nominated and was accepted um, Secretary Eric Shinseki uh, to be the director of the Veterans Affairs. Uh, I worked with him. He was one of my generals and uh, my my boss's boss uh, when I was a cavalry troop commander in Germany. Um, and he went on to become chief of staff of the army. He's an outstanding individual, and I feel quite confident, uh, ready for what I'm seeing that he is moving that organization forward to better take care of veterans. So one of the services that you all provide really is an advocacy service, helping people navigate through the, uh, the various uh, paperwork application processes and uh, determination processes. Sure, and, so on. And, and not only that, but also an advocacy for resources. 
one of the first things we did in conjunction with the Harris County was create a veterans resource for navigating the, the road back home. Um, and that, uh, that directory, we've combined it in with United Way's 211 line. Um, and it's integrated, whether you call 211, Harris County, the city of Houston, it's published um, on the web. So my website is also available. Uh, plus we have printing copies that are available. And so it's advocating information referral and getting people into the right hands of the right person that will help move their issue forward. Let's, let's leave folks here with some numbers and some information. Uh, we'll take a break and come right back after that. But before we do, what number now? 311 is the best way to reach your office? 311 is the easiest and way. And just call 311 and ask for the Veterans Affairs Office. That's correct. And on the web, if people want to uh, see what resources may be available there, what's the website? It's www.houstontx.gov slash vet affairs. Slash vet affairs, one word? All one word. Okay. www.houstontx.gov uh, slash vet affairs. Vet affairs. Or if you just go to the city of Houston's website, okay. under residents, there's a yellow bar, residents, vet affairs. Perfect. All right, uh, buddy, we'll come back and visit some more about uh, the services your office provides and what people can do to get involved and help. Uh, we'll do that right after we take another break from Focus. Please stay tuned. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Focus on Abilities. We're here today with Buddy Grantham from the Mayor's Office who's responsible for Veterans Affairs. And uh, Buddy, we've talked about the number of uh, veterans living in the Houston area, probably one of the largest populations of veterans in the United States, is that right? Well, actually Harris County ranks second behind um, Los Angeles County. So we have a lot of folks who, who uh, serve our country and choose to return to Houston. I mean, they yeah. could go anywhere in the country they wanted to go, I suppose. Houston's a wonderful place to live. And a part of it is because of the great resources we have here. I think part of it is because of the great people that are here. Uh, Houston is so diverse. Uh, one of the things that you get out of the military experience through world travel and the different missions and the things that you do is that an, a much deeper appreciation for people, cultures, and the diverseness. And so because Houston is much more of a diverse population and the, the people, the cultures, the, the food, you know, that it's, it's much more home for coming out of the military. Now, I think a lot of people make the assumption that uh, veterans uh, are fit into the retirement category, but that's not true. Most uh, veterans are actually contributing to the community in many ways, including as uh, employees at businesses all over the community, uh, people doing volunteer work. Uh, they're engaged in, in really active parts of the community, aren't they? Absolutely, and I'm a, one of those examples. After retiring from the military, I'm still a fairly young man. I got things to do and I want to give back. Now, Buddy, one uh, portion of the population that you mentioned earlier concerns me, and that is the large proportion of homeless uh, people who are in fact veterans. I suppose we're doing everything we can to help that population in our community. You know we've got some terrific programs and we've got some additional help with grants also throughout the area. We've been able to partner with and, and help support and get grants in here for employment, for job training, uh, goodwill, career and recovery, search are all running specific programs for homeless veterans to help with employment. Uh, we have specialized housing. We have the DeGeorge at Union Station. We've got Midtown Terrace that are specific veterans. There are programs being run at the Salvation Army, at Star of Hope, a domiciliary for substance abuse veterans to the VA. Plus there's a new program, been on board now for a little over a year, called HUDVASH, HUD VA Supportive Housing. And there's Section 8 type voucher, but they come with that case management to help move people forward. Mm. And uh, the VA, along with the Housing Authority for the City of Houston, Ernie Etux, 
uh, program, and we've met, uh, in fact, I had a meeting several months ago with the head of the VA's program and Ernie Etux and his main chief of staff, Horace Allison, and Ernie put additional resources to make this more productive. The VA, Eric Senseki, secretary, has come out and said he wants to end vet homelessness with veterans in five years. Um, and so they're teaming up when, and with, especially the interagency council. Uh, I assume you're probably aware that Anthony Love, the current president of the co director of the Coalition for the Homeless, is going to be a deputy director for this interagency council. So we have someone that understands veterans, someone that understands homelessness, and he's going about to be part of the solution. That's good. Uh, buddy, if people in our community, uh, <coughs> well-meaning folks, want to get involved and, and volunteer to help uh, resolve some of these issues that veterans have, the homelessness uh, issues pertaining to veterans with disabilities and Otherwise, uh, I suppose they can call your number as well and, and volunteer? Sure. And uh, we work with over 60 different agencies that are doing different programs. Uh, in fact, uh, just a couple weekends ago, uh, we're working on building a house for our veterans through Homes for Our Troops, uh, which brings a lot of volunteer labor force, kind of like a Habitat for Humanity. Uh, so there are all kinds of different programs. And that was a disabled veteran uh, that was injured. and. And once his house is built, then they'll be able to bring him in from the hospital and, and set him up, and this house will be customized for his particular needs. And most of the work's being done by volunteers? For the Homes for Our Troops program. There's another program called uh, uh, HelpingHero.org that builds customized, specialized homes for veterans with disabilities, but it's done uh, all through professional builders, uh, developers. And again, multiple programs. Uh, we work with different organizations if a veteran needs uh, uh, his home modified for a particular need. Uh, there's, as you well know, Lex, there's, there's such a, a depth of organizations here in Houston that want to be part of the solution. Well, the, the good thing about your office, uh, Buddy, and I think this is important for people to understand, we may have a lot of resources, uh, a lot of voluntary organizations, a lot of social service organizations, and healthcare facilities, but sometimes for the individual who's kind of out there trying to navigate their way through this myriad of uh, services and, and, and possibilities, they don't know which ones are most appropriate to meet their particular needs. They don't know which ones they may or may not be eligible for. Uh, they have difficulties sort of orienting themselves in this uh, <coughs> vast array of possibilities. So uh, I think it's important to have your office available uh, to help them with that navigation process, guide them down the right street. And I know it's difficult from that standpoint on your hand to always make the right uh, direction first, so people should be, uh, feel free to call back if, if, if they want further direction. Well, right? I ask them to call back. When we, we talk with them, we try to find out what their specific needs are, whether they're a volunteer looking for something, or whether they're a veteran looking, or a friend of a veteran who's looking for assistance. And, uh, you know, so we don't just hand them off to somebody and say, have a nice day. You know, we will call back or I'll specifically ask them, look, let me know if this is working for you. If not, there's other options and avenues. You may have a personality conflict with, you know, you don't still hit it off with one particular veteran assistance organization, but you may be a perfect fit for another one. I think you're a good fit for what you're telling me and what I know about the organization, but if it's not working, let's find another. Let's move forward. Don't just stop because you didn't, you know, like something. Um, with some of the veterans, the anxiety and, you know, there's, there's sometimes, as you know, with, with the people, particularly in the disability community, sometimes there's a lot of roadblocks that you have to overcome. And some people will stop too often at that first roadblock or maybe the second rather than continue on in achieving their goal. Yeah, it's, uh, I think it's a challenge for people to navigate their way through the service mix and sometimes they're frustrated because they think they're never going to find a solution but one thing that we can say I think is that uh, uh, experience in the military uh, <coughs> causes people to be objective oriented and uh, hopefully with the assistance that you provide and the other great agencies in Houston people can begin to reach their goals and and uh, make that transition which I know is very difficult. Yeah, With that objective orientation there often comes some frustration while the military person may be trained to also go stand in the line someplace, the military person expects that 
line to move forward rapidly because the military does move rapidly. Okay. Uh, and so when you start to get into slow moving issues, it gets a little tougher. Well, uh, I know that you're doing everything you can do to keep the lines moving, buddy. And, and, uh, and we're nearing the end of our program. Uh, any final uh, closing uh, uh, comments for veterans, to, uh, suggestions? Yeah, don't give up. Contact us. You know, Mayor Parker has given full support to this program as we move forward. Um, and it's important to understand that, you know, we can work with a lot of different issues, not just one particular side. It's very holistic, whether it's dealing with education benefits, whether it's dealing with housing, uh, medical, mental health, employment. We have a lot of different folks and organizations out there that want to be part of the solution with you. Okay. So 311 is the number to call, ask for Veterans Affairs. Uh, people will get the opportunity to visit with you or one of the people who works with you in the office. And uh, we know, buddy, that you're doing a great job. I want to thank you for being our guest on Focus on Abilities today. Well, I thank you too. And uh, just so you know, um, there's about 18,000 OIF, OEF veterans uh, in the local Houston area, and about 25% to 30, it's a little higher, um, have some form of disability that we're working with. Okay. Well, that's the answer to the question that we ask at the beginning of today's program. Thank you all for watching very much. I want to thank Buddy Grantham again. I want to thank the uh, uh, city's HTV. Uh, for airing this program. It's a very important subject that we've addressed today. Uh, I want to thank all of you for watching again. Please join us next time for more Focus on Abilities. I'm Lex Frieden, your host. Have a great day.